everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you just found me, welcome. I am Amelia Mashoni from the Beautiful Mind Academy. My YouTube page is to help those practicing studying for the BCBA exam. So continue to watch. As of now, uh, today after B15, derived stimulus relations, that will be the end of section B and I will continue to push forward on to C. For those of you who um, are feeling stuck in other areas other than the areas that are posted, feel free to email or uh, you can call me as well and we can book one-to-one -one or group sessions in those specific areas that you are finding challenging. Um, our sessions are going to be very individualized, so you just let me know which task list item you need assistance with, and you can also share with me your learning style, and I adapt all of my presentations and my teaching to the specific needs of all of my students. So feel free to get in contact with me if you are interested in that, um, and I will continue going through the task list items. Typically, I will be posting on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, so you can definitely subscribe. Um, and those notifications will notify you when a new video is up. So let's continue. As I suggested, um, we are looking at B15, which is derived stimulus relations. Now, when we talk about derived stimulus relations, we are really discussing untrained stimulus stimulus relations. So we're gonna be looking at reflexivity symmetry, transitivity, and stimulus equivalent today. We will dive deeper in what these all mean, what their differences are, and when you get scenarios, how we can decipher one from the other. So let's go ahead and get started with reflexivity. I like to remember this as my reflex, my, my reflection, sorry. So if I'm looking in a mirror, I'm looking at myself. So reflexivity reflect um, that's how I remember it now if you find yourself getting more confused you don't need to use that so this refers to the relationship with the stimulus and itself so if an individual has learned to respond to stimulus a as stimulus a then reflexivity is demonstrated so in this case, if I start to teach my learner, this Pomeranian is the exact same as this Pomeranian, and then they go ahead and find a red ball and match it to another red ball that's identical and that was not trained, that's when we can say that reflexivity has been demonstrated. Okay. So when we are talking about these derived stimulus relations, we are really specifically looking for untrained behavior that is coming and stemming from trained behavior. So we're teaching A equals A, but then we start to see our learner engaging in identical matching in their natural environment at random times. Okay. Symmetry, on the other hand, specifically involves responding in a symmetrical manner. So if an individual has learned to respond to stimulus A as stimulus B, then symmetry is gonna be demonstrated when they can also respond that stimulus B is stimulus A without uh, direct training. So let's take these pictures. So sometimes I find that these definitions can get a little bit wordy. So if we look at this picture, we teach our learner that A equals B, and this is taught, okay? A equals B. But then, later on, they pick up, oh, B equals A, and that was untrained because we never trained it, uh, trained this learner, sorry. That's when we can say symmetry has been demonstrated, okay? And you can do this with anything, right? So as long as we see A equals B and B equals A, then we know that that is symmetry. 
transitivity, on the other hand, is that three-step process. So always think about reflexivity is one, symmetry is two, A to B, B to A, and then transitivity is going to be three. So definition-wise, it involves the ability to respond to a new stimulus based on the relation between two other stimuli. If an individual has learned the relations A equals B and B equals C, transitivity is demonstrated when they respond to the untrained relation A equals C. Again, very wordy. So I would suggest when you do have scenario questions to write letters out. That really, really helped me, especially if you are a visual learner and visually seeing um, all of these steps, if there are multiple. Um, writing letters really helps guide your process instead of having to, um, having to sit there and think, okay, what was, what was A, what was B, okay? So keep that in mind. So let's look at the pictures. If our A equaled B, okay? And then we have B equals C, but then untrained, your learner also notices, hey, A equals C. Okay, so take a look at that picture. If you do have any questions, comment down below. Um, so when we start getting into our scenario questions, um, let's go ahead and get out a piece of paper, a whiteboard or whatever works for you. And then comment down below as well if, if that's something that has been effective. Okay. So when we talk about stimulus equivalence, this involves all three to form stimulus equivalence. So sometimes this gets a little bit um, blurry because sometimes we have students who've asked, oh, I thought that stimulus equivalence was something else. But I'm going to keep it nice and simple. If your example or your scenario has all three within its scenario, so it's demonstrating reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity all in one, okay, that's where you have stimulus equivalence, okay? So let's kind of go through that a little bit, just in case I've lost you. So reflexivity is on its own. We have A equals A. Symmetry is also on its own. A equals B, B equals A. And then transitivity is also on its own in a scenario. If you just see A equals B, B equals A, A equals C. Whereas stimulus equivalence needs to have all three in this scenario. Okay, and I'm gonna provide some examples as well, so that way we can start to see the connection between them. So let's practice question number one. A child has learned to identify the written word cat with a picture of a cat. Additionally, the child has learned that the picture of a cat is associated with the spoken word kitty. Without direct training, the child is now able to correctly match the spoken word kitty with the written word cat. Does this scenario demonstrate reflexivity, symmetry, transitivity, or stimulus equivalence? So like I suggested, I really think that it, you can get into the habit of um, writing out your letters um, that's really a good way to visually see what's going on because there's a lot of words, um, but if you just kind of look at your letters, it might help you. So let's go ahead and try this one with, the, with my suggestion and see if that works. So a child has learned to identify the written word cat. So written word cat can be our A with a picture of a cat. So we can then say, okay, written word cat, is a and then we'll have a picture of a cat is different so we'll say b here additionally the child has learned that the picture so let's get our b because that's what we're talking about picture of a cat is associated with the spoken word kitty so now we have spoken word which is different than the two so we'll label that c Oops. 
That was supposed to be a C. Okay. Without direct training, the child is now able to match the spoken word. So let's get our C. The spoken word kitty with the written word cat. Does this scenario demonstrate reflexivity, symmetry, transitivity, or stimulus equivalent? So in this case, I'm going to look at my letters and I have three. So automatically that should flag down to me that it is transitivity because transitivity is that three process. So if I'm going with transitivity, A equals B, B equals C, so C equals A, this is um, very, uh, it will demonstrate transitivity. Okay, so I'm hoping that those letters help. For me, it helps me because like I said before, there's a lot of words and then sometimes in your mind you're forgetting, okay, was it written? Was it a picture? Was it this? Was it that? Um, so instead of getting lost in the words, you can have this as a map to guide you to the answer. Okay. Um, and if you guys have another method that you're currently doing that's effective, let us know. What are some things that you're doing that are different, but very effective to getting you to the correct answers? Okay. Question number two, and I'm going to do the same thing that we're that I did the last time so we can see. Okay, an instructor presents a picture of a dog and tells the boy to match. So we have a picture. The boy walks across the room to match the picture with a dog to the same picture of a dog. Okay, so this one is identical matching. As you can see, we match the picture with the dog to the same picture of a dog, okay? So because it's the same and it's identical matching, typically when we hear or when we see scenarios that involve identical matching, is that demonstrative of reflexivity, symmetry, transitivity, or stimulus equivalence? So I'm hoping that you guys said reflexivity. So this is a very clear case of a equals A. A learner demonstrates A equals B and B equals A without any prior training. What do we call this? These questions are going to be more for fluency purposes. On the exam, some of these some of questions are not going to be uh, very long. Some of them might be simple. So make sure that when you see those simple ones, we can react quickly, independently, and accurately. So in this case, when we have that A equals B and B equals A, we'll call this symmetry. All right, question number four. Let's get out our handy dandy letters. Okay. The teacher demonstrates that an image of a horse, so let's go ahead, we have an image first, so an image of a horse, so the image of the horse will be A, and the toy horse are the same. So now we're working with a toy horse. So image A, toy horse B, okay? The teacher when, then teaches the, oh sorry, the teacher then teaches that toy horse Okay, so let's go ahead and put B here, is the same as the written H-O-R-S-E. So now we have a different thing here. We have written. So we're going to go ahead and put this as C. Without training, the learner takes the image of the horse and puts it on top of the word horse. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down. Again, lots of words, but we got our letters to help us, so let's use them. So the image, so we have image here. And then we have uh, the word, which is the written word here. So this is C. Okay, so in this case, we do have this A, B, B, C, A, C, what do we call that? Fantastic. If we said transitivity, this is correct because we do have this um, 
three process. Every time we see that ABC type of process, we are talking about transitivity. Well done, everybody. I know these can get tricky, so take your time. If you have to read these scenarios more than once, go ahead and do it. There's no limit on how many times you can read it and just make sure that we are labeling if we are using the strategy where we're writing our letters out just make sure that your letters match what you did right all right let's move on we are almost there and you guys are doing fantastic all right a student has learned to match the written word apple with a corresponding picture of an apple. So here we have written word A, and then we have the corresponding picture of an apple, so that's B. Without direct training on the specific relation, the student can now correctly identify the written word apple, again written, so I'm just matching written with written, when shown the associated picture of an apple. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have A equals B, and then without further training, we can also see that there's a different relation happening where the student can identify the written with the associated picture. Um, in this case, because we do have an AB relation, we would call this symmetry. Um, just a second, I'm just reading this over. Without direct training on this specific relation, the student can now correctly identify the written word apple. Okay, so in this example, um, because it's AB, AB, this would actually not be symmetry. Um, I did want to make this an example of symmetry, but it should say the student can now correctly identify the picture. So B should be up here, the picture with the word, written word. Um, so we would have to flip those in order for it to be symmetry. Sorry about that. Okay, question six. Okay, looks long, but don't let the long ones intimidate you, especially when you have a system and the system is working. Make sure that you're just doing the same thing. Um, and it's the same with, which, with whatever length of the scenario it is. Okay, all right. Oops, sorry about that, guys. All right. I don't know why sometimes it works. And then, oh, right here. I just didn't see it. All right, so. A language intervention program involves teaching a child the associations between spoken, written, and corresponding images. So let's go ahead here. So we have words A. Oh, sorry, spoken word A. Written word B. And images C. The child initially taught that this that this child is initially taught that the spoken word corresponded to a picture. So we have A equals C. This relation is established through direct training. Okay, so A equals C. Oops. This relation is established through direct training. As the child progresses, they spontaneously demonstrate that the picture, the picture, so C, of the dog corresponds to the spoken word. Okay, so we have this here. During the intervention, the, ch the children were able to play after some learning. During play, the instructor said dog, and the child got up and showed the teacher the image of the dog. So we now have a different, um, something different that came out of here. The instructor said dog, so the spoken word was here, A. Okay, let me put A here. Oops. 
and the child got up and showed the teacher the image of the dog. So A equals C. Okay, so in this case, what do we have? So we have um, our ABC was just at the top here because we were showing you um, that the child was starting to make associations with spoken, written, and corresponding images. So when the child was taught, we taught A equals C. Then the child associated C equals A, and then A equals C. So we actually don't have B. So if we're thinking about A, C, A, C, C, A, what does that look like? Now we do have instead of A, B, it's still the same thing. So just because we're changing our letters up doesn't mean that the definitions change, right? So let's be able to also apply different, um, different ways of doing things and still remember that this is still gonna be symmetry because we wrote written, but there was no, um, there was no step here that included written. So it was very much A, C, A, C, or sorry, A, C, C, A, back to A, C. Right, so there was, this was a case of symmetry. Okay, that is the last question actually. So if you have any additional questions, like I said, feel free to reach out, comment on this video. I'll be more than happy to assist you. Um, I'm really hoping that these scenarios started to bring together these concepts, especially because they can be very tricky at times. So, let me know if you are interested in anything like one-to-one -one or group session tutoring and we can definitely get that started ASAP, getting you ready and prepared for your exam. For all of you guys who are studying, just remember, take some breaks. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing absolutely amazing and every day you are learning. Even when you do become a BCBA, you're going to continue to learn and your journey never really ends. So I'm hoping this video brought some clarity to everybody. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you're continuing to watch. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.